Okay, so in the previous video, we gave a very intuitive argument as to why these are the possible results when it comes to the limit of a geometric sequence. In this video, we want to give a more rigorous um, argument as to why this is actually correct. And all we need, surprisingly, is our knowledge of the natural logarithmic function, one of its properties, and its graph. So let's look at this. So first, if we graph ln of x, ln of 1 is 0, and when x is larger than 1, ln is positive, and as x goes to infinity, ln of x goes to infinity. When x is between 0 and negative 1, ln is negative, and as x approaches 0 from the right, ln is approaching negative infinity. And one property that we'll use is the following property. If we take the ln, of a to the b, where we assume a to be positive, we can move b outside as a multiple of ln of a. So ln of a to the b is simply b times the ln of a. So with this property and the graph of ln of x, we are ready to go. So let's first show that for any value of r that is slightly bigger than 1, r to the n will blow up to positive infinity. So instead of considering directly r to the n, we'll consider ln of r to the n. So if we take the ln of r to the n, well r is positive, n is positive, so we can bring n up front as a scalar multiple, so n times ln of r. Now here's where it's interesting. We can now let n approach infinity. Now let's see what happens. Look at the right-hand side of our equality. r is any real number that is slightly larger than 1, or maybe much bigger, but strictly bigger than 1, and for any value of r, larger than 1, ln of r is positive. When r is very close to 1, ln of r will be small, but ln of r will always be positive as long as r is bigger than 1. So r is strictly positive, ln of r is strictly positive, and as n goes to infinity, well here we're just being redundant, n goes to infinity. So in the limit, we have a positive number times something which goes to infinity. So, of course, the whole thing must go to positive infinity. But if you look, that means that the ln of r to the n goes to positive infinity as n goes to infinity. But how can the ln of something blow up? Well, the only way for the ln blowing up to positive infinity is that its argument must blow up to positive infinity. So r to the n must blow up to positive infinity as well, which proves that as n goes to infinity, r to the n blows to infinity. And this is this result right here. When r is larger than 1, r to the n blows up to positive infinity. So that concludes this case. I'll put a little start to keep track of where we're at. Well, r equals 1, again, it's trivial. 1 to the n is always 1. The sequence is constant. It's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 forever. And that clearly converges to 1. So again, this is trivial. Check. Let's jump to here. When r is negative 1, again, this is rather trivial. Negative 1 to the n will give you, when n begins at 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1 will oscillate forever between negative 1 and 1, this sequence clearly diverges that is it, as sorry, it is not approaching a fixed real value. 
So what about r being strictly smaller than negative 1? And let me remind you here that this was proving that as n goes to infinity, r to the n blows up to positive infinity for any r that is strictly larger than 1. But now we are assuming that r is strictly less than negative 1. The case when r is negative 1, as we've said, is clear. Well, the idea is simply to rewrite r as the negative of its absolute value. Right? r is negative, so it has a negative sign. If you put the absolute value, you lose your negative sign, and now you bring it back. Think simply of the example where r is negative 2. Negative 2 is the negative of the absolute value of negative 2, because the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So a negative number is the negative of its absolute value. And why am I doing this? Well, let's take r to the n. That's what we're considering. So r to the n is this to the n. which is quite simply negative 1 to the n times the absolute value of r to the n. But if you think of it, if r is strictly less than negative 1, then an absolute value, r, must be larger than 1. And we have just proved when we have a number that is larger than 1, which is the case for the absolute value of r, and we take larger and larger powers of this number that is strictly larger than 1, the result is positive infinity. So this must converge to positive infinity. This will oscillate forever between positive and negative 1. Therefore, r to the n, as n gets bigger, will oscillate forever between positive and negative infinity, so the limit does not exist. check. And now we're left with one case when r is between negative 1 and 1. And here we'll ignore the case when r is 0, because 0 to any positive power is 0, and the sequence is 0, 0, 0 forever, which clearly converges to 0. So we'll break this up into two cases when r is between 0 and 1, and between negative 1 and 0. So what if now r is strictly between 0 and 1? Well, again, we'll consider not r to the n, but the ln of r to the n. r is positive, so we could move n outside as a multiple. And again, we will let n approach positive infinity on both sides. But the key point is, if r is between 0 and 1, then r is somewhere in here, and the ln of r is now less than 0. So this is negative. But as n goes to infinity, clearly n goes to infinity. And so the result will be something that goes to infinity times a negative number, this must converge to negative infinity. But now look back at the first expression, the ln of something. This is a sequence. And the limit of the ln of this sequence is negative infinity. So where can the ln be negative infinity? Well, let's see. The ln only goes to negative infinity if the argument is getting closer and closer and closer to 0. And because the ln of this sequence goes to negative infinity, the sequence must converge to 0 from the right. As we've just said, the only way for ln to approach negative infinity is for the argument to shrink to 0. And because here the ln does approach negative infinity, the argument must shrink to 0. And this proves that when r is between 0 and 1, r to the n does converge to 0. And now you ask, well, what if we look at the other half? 
if r is between negative 1 and 0. This is now trivial. We'll use the same trick that we used in this case. So if r is negative, r equals the negative of its absolute value. But if r is between negative 1 and 0, its absolute value is less than 1. So we can now take r to the n, which will be negative 1 to the n, times the absolute value of r to the n. So the absolute value of r is a number that is positive, and strictly less than 1, but when we take a larger and larger power of a number that is positive and less than 1, we have just proved that this will shrink to 0. Now there's the leftover negative 1 to the n, which is plus or minus 1. But plus or minus 1 times something that shrinks to 0 also shrinks to 0. So r to the n, whether r is between negative 1 and 0, or 0 and 1, in both cases, does shrink to 0. And this proves our last case. And that's it.